Are the Oklahoma Sooners facing some unrealistic expectations? One analyst thinks so. We'll discuss next on Locked On Sooners. You are Locked On Sooners, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma Sooners. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Sooner Nation? Welcome to Locked On Sooners, and thank you for making Locked On Sooners your first listen every day. Shout out to all the everydayers out there. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Over at Game Time, I'm John Williams. You can follow me on Twitter at John Nine Williams. The show is at Locked On Sooners and Josh Pate of Two Four Seven Sports and the Late Kick Show with Josh Pate. Uh, joined the Crane and Company show uh, to discuss expectations for Oklahoma and Texas heading into their first year in the SEC. Now, we're sitting here. We're optimistic. I know Longhorns fans, they're optimistic as well. And granted, it's a new challenge for Oklahoma, for Texas. The, the depth of teams that they'll have to face, arguably better over in the SEC than what it is in the Big 12. At the same time, as we've discussed on a number of occasions here on this show, those programs will now also have to deal with Oklahoma on their slate. They're, those programs are now going to have to deal with Texas on their slate. So the SEC was deep. It just got deeper. But let's just explore what Josh Pate had to say about this. Again, over at the Crate Crane and Company uh, show, uh, he said, everybody understands the challenge when you go to Athens. Everybody understands the challenge when LSU or Alabama come into your building. The whole going to Starkville on a Saturday for an 11 a.m. kickoff, like that sounds very simple because any given year, Mississippi State could be headed toward a sub-500 finish, but then you turn on the draft the next spring, and they've got like two defensive linemen going in the first round. Now, the Oklahoma Sooners, they don't play Mississippi State this year, but they have a couple teams that you could apply the Mississippi State logic to, right? So Mississippi State a program not necessarily expected to have high expectations to achieve a lot this year. Well, on Oklahoma's schedule, you could argue that maybe an Auburn or a South Carolina kind of fit the bill, right? Two programs that were not great last year, sub 500 teams last year in the SEC, and the expectations aren't super high for either of those programs going into 2024. And yet, there is talent on those rosters that could be top 100 NFL draft picks next year, certainly get drafted next year that could cause Oklahoma some trouble. Now you look at the environments that you're going into with Auburn. Maybe that gives you a little bit more pause than the actual roster itself. But as we've seen in years past, I mean, Oklahoma can be the better team, but on a down day, on a day when maybe you don't have your your most important player in Danny Stutzman, you can get beat. And that's going to be the truth when you go into the SEC, is that, yeah, you might have better rosters, you might be better positioned for certain games against certain opponents, but if you have a down day, when you go to Auburn, Alabama to face the Tigers, you could very well get beat. Remember, even if Auburn's not expected to go win the SEC this year, They were a team that basically had Alabama beat if it weren't for a miracle, you know, fourth and 30 uh, touchdown pass from Jalen Milrow uh, to the back corner of the end zone. So this is an Auburn team that can be very, very competitive and in their own building that could cause Oklahoma some fits. South Carolina, they've got an athletic young quarterback in Lenora Sellers who everybody's pretty high on out there in Columbia. Now, well, does that mean they'll come into Norman and beat OU? Not necessarily, but it could mean that they give Oklahoma some fits that you weren't necessarily expecting, a la Jason Bean from Kansas, right? You know, you, you sometimes you look at a roster, you look at a team, you're like, man, Oklahoma should have no problem with this. But again, those are talented programs. Those are talented teams. There's a reason why SEC teams generally rank higher in recruiting rankings than other schools or on average as a conference, they rank higher than other conferences. And that's just because a lot of the talent is staying in the Southeastern conference. And so even if you look at a South Carolina or you look at an Auburn and you chalk those two up as those are wins for the Oklahoma Sooners. I mean, 
not to steal a phrase from old uh, Lee Corso, but not so fast, my friend. I mean, these are our games that Oklahoma is going to have to play well and play well to win. That's not to say that you should have, you know, unreal uh, that Oklahoma fans or Texas fans are having unreasonable expectations. No, I think you look at the expectations for Oklahoma. They're the same. They don't change. I, I want to say it was Gay Biker that said it best. At Oklahoma, you're expected to win conference championships. You're expected to contend for national championships. Does that mean it's going to happen every single year? Not necessarily. But those are the expectations. When you have seven national titles and 50 conference championships, those are the expectations. You don't lower your expectations just because you're going into the SEC or just because you're going to have to face Alabama, LSU, Ole Miss, Missouri, Tennessee, a, a host of top 15 teams on your schedule. No, the expectations are still the same. You rise to the level of expectation. And so I, I understand what Josh Pate is saying here that maybe people need to kind of have a, a reality check. At the same time, the expectations are the expectations. Does that mean that they'll meet those this year? We'll find out. We'll we'll see, right? I, I believe Oklahoma is going to be a playoff team. I wrote it in my college football playoff projections for Sooners Wire. I, I, I've said it on this show in the last month or so that I think Oklahoma beats Texas. And if they can go three and two against a group of Alabama, Missouri, LSU, Ole Miss, and Texas, I very much think that they're a playoff team. I think they could potentially be better than three and two against those five. Now, will they go undefeated? Probably not. It's been a really long time since Oklahoma has gone through a regular season undefeated, but I very much believe that this is a team and this is a roster that's capable of winning big in 2024. We don't have to wait for 2025, 2026 for Oklahoma to get to a point where they're competitive with the SEC. No, I think with what Brent Venables and his staff have done on the recruiting trail, they've set this team up to go into the SEC this year and be competitive. What did Brent Venables say when he came to Oklahoma? Oklahoma takes a backseat to nobody. And that's going to ring true. Now, will they meet the expectations of being a playoff team, being a playoff contender? That remains to be seen. That's going to be one of those things that's going to be so much fun to watch about this team as we get ready for the 2024 season is how do they stack up against Tennessee in their first SEC game? What is that road trip like to Auburn? What is that, that run at the end of the season where you play Missouri and Bama and LSU in three of the final four weeks? What does that look like? How does that go for the Oklahoma Sooners? Do they rise to the occasion in that tough stretch? Because that's the difference, right? That's the difference when you're going to the SEC is, especially along the line of scrimmages, the things are going to be a little bit more difficult and it's going to be on a more regular basis than what you might have had when you were in the Big 12. But I think the, the expectations, I think, are, are reasonable. I think it's reasonable to expect Oklahoma to be a playoff contender. I, I think it's reasonable to expect Oklahoma to flirt with 10 wins, 11 wins on this season. A lot of it's just going to come down to, will they? And that's the big question. And we can't wait to find out. A lot of it's going to rely on uh, some freshmen stepping up because Oklahoma has got a talented roster but they still have some areas where they really need to see some productivity. Who's going to be OU's best freshman in 2024? Let's discuss that next coming up here on Locked On Sooners. Game time makes getting NBA Finals tickets even easier, faster. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer you get to tip off with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying. NBA tickets, Major League Baseball, tickets for your favorite comedy show that's coming to town, whatever it is, get it in, go get it over at game time. Again, last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals, 
and game time ticket coverage. Your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. And they got that lowest price guarantee or game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying NBA finals tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on college for $20 off your first purchase terms apply again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for $20 off your first purchase. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all the shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Again, thanks for making Locked On soon as your first listen every single day. Shout out to all the everydayers out there that are tuning in with us as we get through this offseason, as we work towards the 2024 season. I'm excited to see what this freshman class is going to offer because this is arguably the best class that Brent Venables has brought in. Now, I know rankings-wise, it doesn't stack up in the same way as the 2023 recruiting class, but maybe it's the most important class because of what they did along the defensive line. CBS sports, they uh, chose a freshman for each of the top 10 teams in the nation uh, going into 2024 as, as who's going to be their best freshman this year. Oklahoma wasn't one of the top 10, so they didn't get listed, but I thought it'd be a really interesting question to answer for us here on Locked On Sooners. Who is Oklahoma's best freshman for 2024? Or who might be the most impactful? I'm going to choose one for both offense and defense because I think you could find a role and find a an avenue to playing time for somebody on, on the offensive side of the ball. Now, it's not clear cut because you're pretty deep on offense, especially at the skill position. So you may not see like a Zion Kearney or an Ivan Carrion or a, a KJ Daniels or a Zion Raggins. You might not see a lot of those guys getting playing time because the wide receiver position is so, so deep. Uh, running back, that's another spot that is a little bit deep and you don't have to rush a freshman onto the field. Offensive line, some of those guys are going to have to you know step up and, and push some of the veterans, a Eugene Brooks and Eddie Pierre-Louis, if they can push some of the veterans, maybe they could do it, pull a Caden green and earn some playing time. I'm going to look at two freshmen here on offense and that's Taylor Tatum and Devon Mitchell. First, let's talk about Taylor Tatum. Yes. Running backs deep. You got Gavin Sach Sachuk, Javante Barnes, Sam Franklin, uh, Caleb Hicks. I always forget Caleb Hicks. I, I can't remember. I, I can't believe I always forget him because he was on the show with us a few years back before he joined Oklahoma. This is a really, really nice running back room. So why would I consider Taylor Tatum maybe to be an impactful freshman? Well, I think he could help Oklahoma on kick returns. He is a dynamic player with the ball in his hands. I do think that he'll earn some snaps in, in some situational, uh, in some situations. He may not earn, you know, 20 snaps a game. He may not get five touches in a game, but I think that they'll want to show some things with him on the field, especially those first three weeks of the season against Maine. You're probably going to get a, a little bit of a glimpse of Taylor Tatum. If he can get uh, worked into the offensive flow, get the game plan, get the playbook down this summer, then it wouldn't surprise me at all to see Taylor Tatum getting some playing time. But I think as a kick returner, at the very least, you can get something out of him as a true freshman. Now, do you want to burn that red shirt as just a kick returner? Maybe, maybe not. We'll see what they want to do on that front. But if he's somebody that can provide you with a spark in the return game, I don't think you worry so much about the red shirt because you're trying to win football games now. And given who he is and what his expectations are and, and the talent that he's got, he may only be with Oklahoma for three years, regardless of the red shirt situation or not. So get him on the field. If he can help you, get him on the field. Devon Mitchell, that's another dude I think that's going to be able to help Oklahoma this year, even though he's going to be really, really young. Remember, he was supposed to be a part of the 2025 class, reclassified. So he's coming to Oklahoma pretty young. But physically, physically, he's ready to go. 
you know, six, four, six, five, you know, 240, 250 pounds. He's got the frame to be an impactful player. Now it's just a matter of getting used to what that feels like at the college level, getting his assignments down because at tight end, you got to know all the passing game information, all the running game information. You got to understand your splits. You got to understand what your roles are going to be in both and the roles of everybody else around you as well. So it's not just an easy, Hey, just line up, go catch passes sort of a situation. No tight ends got a lot to learn. Sometimes people say that tight end has as much to learn about at, on the offense as the quarterback does, or as the center does, because they have to be involved in so many aspects. And, you know, it, you can't just ignore what the wide receiver is doing. You got to understand what the wide receivers are doing in their route concept so that you can better run your route concept as well. So, but I like what Devon Mitchell brings to the table. He's got a great athleticism, great hands. He's going to be able to help Oklahoma. I think they'll get him involved this year because they, even if it's not in a starting role, I do think that we'll see some packages where he's on the field. Maybe it's three tight end sets uh, around the goal line where you want to take advantage of his pass catching prowess. That'd be a great spot for him, uh, especially because he's got the size to be an impactful blocker down there in short yardage situations as well. Defensively, dude, you could go a number of different directions on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, I, I mean, I think the obvious one is going to be Jaden Jackson, David Stone. To me, those two guys are going to have an opportunity to mix into the defensive tackle rotation, even if they don't start this year. I know a lot of people are clamoring for David Stone to start as a true freshman. And, and hey, dude, that could happen. There's no reason to think that he couldn't ascend into a starting role for the Sooners in 2024. It's just really hard to do as a true freshman at defensive tackle. And it's not because of the, the talent's not there. It's just because the game is different from the high school level to the college level playing in the trenches. That's why you don't often see a lot of true freshmen starting along the offensive or defensive line. It happens, but it's kind of the exception, not the rule. But David Stone's one of those guys that could come in and earn significant snaps in year one. Everybody's been really, really high on what he's done since coming to Oklahoma. The work ethic's been there. The attitude's been there. The, the talent has been evident. Jaden Jackson's another one of those guys that, Okay, with Dominic Williams, with Dejon Terry, he's probably not going to see a lot of nose tackle reps or at least starting as a nose tackle, but he'll certainly factor into the rotation. But I think he could even bump over to that three technique defensive tackle spot as well because he's got a lot of juice. He's got good burst. He's got good quickness. He can penetrate really quickly and get into the backfield. And that's, I mean, that's what you need. You need guys that can get into the backfield quickly. That's why Grayson Halton, the expectations are really high for him this year is because he's got that agility, that quickness that can get off the ball, get to the backfield quickly. But I think Jaden Jackson's another one of those guys that could be impactful in that way. So those are the guys I'm looking at. David Stone, Jaden Jackson, if they can make an impact for Oklahoma at defensive tackle, I think it just it helps amplify everything it makes life so much easier for the defensive ends for the linebackers but it also gives you an opportunity to give dominic williams and dejon terry and grayson halton and you know davin sears give those guys breaks to where you're not having to overextend them throughout four quarters or throughout a a 12 hopefully 13 maybe 14 15 game season i mean this is you know load management matters and depth is going to matter especially when you're playing in the trenches in the sec where you're going to get beat up week after week after week and you're going to do some beating up yourself but you're also it's going to take a physical toll and so having the ability to go three deep at both def defensive tackle spots because you have these elite true freshmen coming in dude that is going to make a big big difference for the oklahoma sooners in 2024 well we got a couple people that are facing uh, some legal issues on the football team broke on wednesday uh, we'll discuss that coming up next here on locked on sooners When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn, a place where more than two and a half million small businesses are hiring. Again, go to linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. 
So breaking early Wednesday morning, there was some news that Makari Vickers was getting into some or was in some legal trouble. At the moment, no details have been released uh, regarding Makari Vickers arrest, but it, it's not great for a kid who only played in eight games last year and really didn't play a whole lot. Still trying to earn a role with the Oklahoma Sooners and, and potentially compete for a starting cornerback job. I know this is a, a time where, OK, it's just a lot of workouts that are happening right now. You're not on the verge of playing games. You're not in fall camp, but it's just one of those times where you kind of, kind of buckle down and, and stay disciplined. Well, turns us to Dion Burks. Uh, it was reported uh, by a number of sources, uh, but uh, we can go to OU insiders and Ryan, uh, Jesse Crittenden for OU insider at rival reporting it that uh, Dion Burks was arrested for three misdemeanor counts earlier this month, uh, booked into Cleveland County jail on June 1st for driving a motor vehicle while under the influence of alcohol, transporting an open container of alcohol and speeding, According to the affidavit, um, this was he was arrested around 2:40 a.m. Um, and then booked a little bit later. Uh, this is not also great. You know, this is a guy that you're expecting to have a big year, and you're counting on him to be a big time playmaker for you in 2024. And I mean, you got to have your guys showing better judgment than this. It's not you know, one of those things where you're going to look to kick them off the football team or anything like that. You're, you're not going to be, you know, burying them necessarily on the depth chart or, or saying, Hey, you're, you're done here. No, you, you want to give everybody a second chance and give them an opportunity to uh, respond in the right way with good decision-making and, and, you know, show, show the idea that they can, they can stay disciplined even when, you know, we're just in workout time and we're not, getting ready for games because, Hey, you're going to rely upon these guys. You know, Makari Vickers might not start for you this year, but as we saw last year, you might need him to play significant snaps. If injury situations continue to arise at the cornerback position for the Sooners, Dion Burks. I mean, this is a guy that's got future first round NFL draft pick uh, labels being thrown around at him right now. Well, now's the time where you need to buckle down and get and be serious about the decisions that you make. You know, there are a lot of things that you could have, that these guys could have done differently. And there are a lot of people that they could have called uh, if these allegations are, you know, are correct and the, the charges hold up, but it, it, it just kind of baffles your mind sometimes that, that sometimes these are the decisions that we make now, young guys, they're in college. Everybody makes, you know, mistakes in college. Uh, but these are, are, are decisions that could impact not just you know who they are as people but their future livelihoods and, and things like that so you know we'll, we'll see how it all shakes out over the the next few months no court dates have been set for either guy but i mean it's it's not a great way for the summer to be to be going uh it's still more than a month from fall camp and a couple months from the the start of the season you got to have your guys locked in and, and it's going to be a test to you know Brent Venable's culture and Brent Venable's ability to respond as a coach and as the staff's ability to respond, uh, it's going to be a test to the leadership on this team. Can they get these guys and and kind of get everybody else to buckle down and be about the work over the next few months? Because if you're going to go compete and you're going to go win games in the SEC, you got to be about the work. Now I know there's jokes being thrown around that Oklahoma is now SEC ready because of this. And, and I get it. You know, you look at a program like Georgia that's had its issues and others as well. L LSU has had issues going on legally. I have a hard time like taking any of this in jest. I have a hard time, you know, creating a laughing matter out of these situations because I mean, DUIs, you know, driving under the influence can affect not just the person that's driving, but a lot of people. And it's a serious thing. And I know that the coaching staff are having those discussions with these guys uh, in response to all this. You know, the Burke situation, that was he got arrested back on June 1. So that's a while ago. And I imagine the coaching staff was well aware of that uh, before this report ever came out. And, you know, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say they were trying to keep it, everything under the radar, but they were handling it internally. And that's what the, the release from the University of Oklahoma Athletics Department said. And it's the same from Akari Vickers, trying to handle things internally. And, hey, I respect that. And I and I think that's the way to handle all of this. And I think also not just writing them off. You know, everybody makes mistakes. Everybody does. This is an opportunity now for Deion Burks, from Akari Vickers, to show that they can mature 
and make better decisions, make better choices moving forward. Football is about accountability. It's about development. We know that Brent Venables is about developing not just the football player, but the man as well. And now is the time where soul mission is going to be put to the test. Now's the time where Brent Venables culture is going to be put to the test. And I think it's going to, it's going to benefit both guys in the long run. It's just a little bit of a setback right now, but I think it, you know, long-term, you know, you, you hate to say somebody's going to be better because they, they made a mistake. Well, hopefully they don't make the same mistake twice. And if that's the case, well, then they're going to be better in the long run, but Hey, best of luck to those guys. Hey, uh, rooting for you really are really rooting for Macari Vickers and Dion Burks and, and not just as, as football players and how they can help Oklahoma, but as people, you just want to see young people thrive and young people, you know, doing what they do and doing what they love and, and excelling at that. And then just having the opportunity to just excel as humans. So, you know, shout out and, and best of luck, you know, lifting up, sending good thoughts their way. Um, I know it can get beat down a little bit and your confidence can be shaken a little bit uh, when something like this happens, but just hang in there, listen to your coaches and, and, you know, just, just take the necessary steps to writing this um, moving forward. So uh, it, it's, you hate to have a summertime that's marred by, by some legal drama, but it, it happens. It happens across the country and programs across the country. And you just hope it it's minimal and it, and it's isolated to just a couple incidents. So we'll see where it, uh, where it goes from here. Uh, but that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Sooners. Thanks so much for tuning in and making Locked On Sooners your first listen every single day. For your second listen, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. My name is John Williams. You can follow me on Twitter at John9Williams. The show is at Locked On Sooners on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, wherever you follow uh, your favorite shows. Make sure you subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcast. Again, free and available on all platforms and on YouTube. So hit that notification bell, hit that like button, and that subscribe button over on YouTube to let you know when new episodes drop. But until next time, I'm John Williams, Boomer Sooner.